organized year awards from 2010 to 2014 to acknowledge young Indian achievers at the Youth Achievers Awards Night. To both of you who are representing Gopio Northwest. As we light the lamp to signify knowledge, we cannot have, we cannot go away without having a Swarasati Vandana. Ma Swarasati is the, uh, it symbolizes knowledge and we would like to have a performance to symbolize her presence on this event. Please welcome on stage Zermar Joshi, who is a Visharad in Bharatnatyam. She's been teaching dance for past 10 years in Sydney and tonight she's performing the Saraswati Vandana for us. So please welcome Zermar Joshi.
Can I now request our chief guest this evening, Professor John Simmons, to join me on stage. Thank you. A round of applause for Dr. Thank you. Now, Professor Simmons is the Deputy Vice Chancellor for Macquarie University. He is also the Chief Academic Officer that is responsible for the quality delivery of education to undergraduate and graduate students. He's also won a number of awards in Australia as well as round so of the Gopio, uh, the members of the Indian diplomatic community, and all my friends here tonight. When Mr. Ruby, Melvinda Ruby, invited me to uh, ask if I would like to come and say a few words here tonight, um, I was very pleased to do so for, for two reasons. The first reason is um, that I know India pretty well. I've travelled a lot in India, and also in Sri Lanka and Nepal, but mainly in India. And um, I'm always very pleased to uh, meet Indian people and to come to events like this. But the second reason was uh, that I'm actually English, and um, I grew up, like a lot of English people, with connections with India. My grandfather had the honour to serve with Indian soldiers uh, during the Second World War. And I grew up with very, very positive stories uh, about India when I was a child. I was very close to my grandfather. The other thing about the English, as you all know, is that we're rather fond of curry. And so the other thing that I said to Mr. Ruby, that I would only come here if I got to eat the same food that you got. Because about five years ago, I was invited to another Indian community event. And I won't say which one it was. And as I was making my, my speech, I could smell this delicious food being cooked. And, and I couldn't wait. So I went and sat down, and people went off to get their food, and I went off to get my food. And they said, oh, no, 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 you're our guest. We, we will serve you. And they bought me a meat pie. <laughs> so I think I'm going to do better than that tonight. <laughs> anyway, the main aim of this, of this evening is to um, honour and congratulate the young people who have graduated from high school uh, with high marks or with achievements of, of other kinds. And as one of our um, MCs said earlier on, um, we never do these things on our own. If I, if I want to look back to my own uh, life, uh, particularly as a student as a school, I realised just how much I did owe to my, my parents. Not because they were going to help me academically, they couldn't. Because, but because I realised that um, the upbringing they gave me uh, made me never doubt that I could achieve something if I really wanted to. And that's important. The other thing is that many of you um, have got uh, very high scores uh, in your HSC, and that's terrific. When you go to university, and um, I hope some of you will come to Macquarie sooner or later, um, just remember that the way that you worked at school, you need to do other things now. You're going to be interested to know that the students who come into Macquarie, uh, who actually do best in terms of their graduation results, are not students who come in uh, through one of our high ATAR schemes. They're students who come in through our Global Leadership Program. And these are students who have usually done very well academically, but they've also done a lot of things as well. They've committed, they've participated in community organisations, they've done some sport, whatever. And it seems that it's that combination of academic ability and a desire, and a desire to be part of things and to succeed and to contribute that really makes the difference to those students. So I urge you all, um, to participate in other things. Don't, don't just get uh, fixated on getting high marks because I promise you the high marks will come if you enjoy yourself and do the right things. The other thing I'd like to say um, is that a lot of people um, are increase, increasingly anxious about what happens when you graduate. Historically, uh, in this country and in many other countries, um, it's been pretty certain that if you, if you got a degree, uh, you would go on and have a reasonably successful career and probably get the job you want. The connection between those two is starting to become weaker. 
Some of the big employers in the UK are actually saying that they can't see how having a degree contributes to the value as an employee. Then also you should get a degree. But what they are saying is, um, just think about how it all works. Just think about how it all fits together. And there are basically only three things that you need to know. And I promise you this is true. Whatever you're studying, there are only three things you need to know. How to communicate, how to solve problems, and how to work with other people in a productive way. And whether you're studying law, or medicine, or history, or geography, those three things you can learn and you can practice. And I promise you that if you can do that, you will be successful. So I won't keep you any longer. Um, there's nothing worse than uh, having to sit and listen to a speech with the delicious uh, smells coming from the kitchen and musicians starting to think about things and dancers starting to think about things. So once again, congratulations to all of the young people who are here tonight and also to their families for supporting them to these wonderful achievements. Thank you very much and have a lovely evening. Love, the Krishna Ras Leela dance, they'll be performing today is on a medley of Krishna flute themes and the song Wo Kisna Hai. Ladies and gentlemen, please join hands for these beautiful kids standing behind me.
called Mr. Gurdeep Singh, the Councillor of Hornsby, who is representing Mayor Hornsby. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, high achievers. First of all, I must acknowledge the traditional owners of this land, the Gurigai and Dalit people, their elders past and present, whose, on whose lands we stand today and gather here. I also acknowledge uh, the Deputy Vice Chancellor, Professor John Simon uh, from Macquarie University, uh, Councillor Dalip Chopra is with us, and many of eminent community leaders that we have today with us. Ladies and gentlemen, we gather here today to celebrate outstanding success, to celebrate outstanding achievement from none other than our own community members, our children who have worked hard to get past the milestone of HSC and who have worked hard to excel in their field of interest. I say outstanding success is only possible and I say this to the young achievers, boys and girls, it was only possible because your parents worked hard to provide you an atmosphere which is, which is favorable to concentrate on your studies, to concentrate on your work, to concentrate on your homework, your assignments, and everything. Your parents possibly work two jobs every day, possibly work three jobs every day to provide that support to you. Your school, your teachers, they provided a safe, loving and caring environment in your school so that you could focus on your study. It's a time that you all have to thank your parents in helping you to get past this HSC milestone. As Professor Simon said before, getting a degree is very important. A degree is something in your hand which nobody can take away for the rest of your life from you. A, an academic qualification, and no doubt, you all will excel, continue to excel in your university studies of your uh, chosen uh, profession. You will continue to excel because you have demonstrated your commitment to it. So you will continue to do that. But when I say a degree cannot be taken away from you, your knowledge cannot be, because it's a, it's a certificate of your knowledge, it cannot be taken away from you. And it comes in very good stead when you go through the ups and downs of life. Become a premier global advocacy body representing the interest and continues to be at the forefront of monitoring and addressing critical issues of relevance and benefit to the NRI community across the globe and India. Gopio, since its inception in New York in 1989, has gone a long way and currently has 55 chapters all over the world. Gopio Sydney is the local chapter that was conceived on May 11, 2008 by the then International President and current International Chairman, Mr. Anderson at Parameda. Globio is probably the only NRI body that is recognized by the Ministry of External Affairs, Government of India, as it organizes a conference in 
in parallel with annual diaspora event, Pravasi Bharti Divas by Government of India each year in different parts of the world. This Gopya Sini team has recently taken over in January 2016. We have endeavored to enthuse the organization and bring about new talent and young blood. The outgoing team did a tremendous job and we are so thankful to them for their untiring hard work and contribution. We have noticed that of late the morale of members was sulking and the chapter was stagnating because of some reasons as usually happens in many such non-voluntary organizations. We have tried to identify the issues and remove the impediments. One of the main reasons has been the obscurers reluctance to move on, thereby leaving no room for fresh air and new experience to squeeze in and make the difference. To remove this impediment, we have amended the constitution and barred the president to seek a re-election second time. That will therefore introduce upward shift each term. Gopya Sini being a charity organization, we raise funds for natural calamities and members of the community in distress because of the reasons beyond their control. This year, we will be raising the funds for and contributing the profits from the event to Australian Foundation for Mental Research, as we are of the opinion that mental health issues are far more harmful, insidious, and have wider ramifications than what appears to the eye. Mental health not only affects the victim, but the entire socioeconomic damage, family, and surroundings. Quite often, the disease goes unnoticed and untreated over a long time. We donated dollar 700 to SD Institute of Line, Ambala, India last year. Gyan is our signature event that was started way back in 2010. Gyan stands for Gopio Young Achievers Award Night. Gyan in Hindi means knowledge. Knowledge is to knowledge is to power and power and Gopio is to empower men. Gopio Sydney in its Gyan series of annual events has been organizing and honoring students of Indian origin for the last seven years, who burning midnight all oil come out with flying colors from HSE and obtain high ATR during their and doing their parents proud. Over the years, it has become a much sought after and awaited event among the Indian diaspora. Gopio Sydney also acknowledges and awards young and not so young but young at heart who have excelled in sports, performing arts, visual arts, public speaking, leadership, and literature, etc. and have presented state our national poem and that goes like this come one come all together we stand tall this is time call life is not to stall gyan is to knowledge knowledge is to power if you are an achiever is all praise we have to show to stand among the rest as a tower if you yield to be we are here to empower if you have any doubt on your abilities, come attend Gyan, we will show you your capabilities. Self-doubt is proud with danger, why do so? Do you need to be taught? Learning is a lifelong process. Learning should never stop. Take it easy, life is just not a test. If it is, it's not needed to pass. As long as you have heeded that it is the journey that matters, not the destination. The losers are the critters. The winners are the ones who always have fun in terms while on the run and say, take it down. Thank you. Miss Melan Punjab, uh, Punjabi 2015 and Miss Tia Punjabi 2015.
Ramneet has been uh, very passionate about the Punjabi culture and uh, tradition and we sh tonight she is going to give us some foot tapping dance. Ramneet, can we please have you on stage? Ramneet would just like to say a few words to us before she starts the dance. Thank you. Jimmy Nachata Lakala Chikaki Nita Koi Lord. Jimmy Vekata Akuma Takaki Nita Koi Lord. Jimmy Hasa Tathoda Shermaki Nita Koi Lord. Jimmy Langa Tavanga Shanekaki Nita Koi Lord. Myself, Ravneet Kaur, will be performing in front of you a folk Punjabi dance which is originally done on the bride's side before her wedding just to celebrate her upcoming married life. I hope you all enjoy. Thank you. Sure, everyone would. So please welcome Ravneet.
terms of having a number of clinics around Sydney who is focused on counselling kids and families through some form of trauma like suicide as well as drug, alcohol and sometimes domestic violence as well. So can you please make Mr Chitta feel welcome while he says a few words about mental illness. Thank you. Thanks very much for that uh, introduction. Um, yeah, look, uh, ladies and gentlemen and distinguished guests, I'd like to thank uh, Balvinda for inviting me here today. And Balvinda mentioned mental health in his speech. It's fantastic that Gopia Sydney does give some money to uh, mental health and to mental illness uh, organisations. Um, look, tonight I'm just going to spend five minutes um, giving you some insights into mental illness. Mental illness is often something that goes under the radar and um, it's a very important topic. In Australia, every family knows somebody who has a mental illness. Um, the stats show that one in four teenagers in Australia will suffer from some form of mental illness, uh, depression or anxiety. So that's one in every four teenagers in Australia at some stage through their adolescence. I also want to tell you this very alarming statistic that came out only about 12 months ago. The statistic is that the World Health Organisation has indicated that by 2030, depression will be the leading cause of disease in Australia. And it's not just Australia, it's Canada, it's the United States, it's Great Britain, and it's New Zealand, and most of Western Europe. So this is a very alarming stat. By the year 2030, 14 years away, the number one reason that Australians will be accessing GPs, and they won't think about that tonight, because you need to think about the ramifications on the public health system, the ramifications to our workforce. It's an alarming stat. We need to be addressing this now. We can't wait till 2030 to be addressing that stat. So I really want you to have a think about how you can address that in your local community. Um, but also, well, what are we doing wrong? We're obviously uh, we're doing something wrong in Western civilization to have these alarming depression rates uh, and suicide rates. Um, now, I'm a, a psychologist by trade. Um, and I also work as a counsellor on Karingai Council. But when I was at school, and what got me to work as a psychologist, I had a best friend, and his name was Aaron. And when I was 13, um, Aaron actually committed suicide. Uh, he was only 13. He was in the, uh, the top rugby team, the top debating team, the top cricket team. He was uh, one of the, the school's highest achievers. Uh, and this was a very prestigious all-boys school called Sydney Grammar School in Sydney. And he took his life and the way the school handled it was that the principal got up on stage the next day and actually said, if any boy talks about this again, you're going to be expelled. And that's how we dealt with suicide and depression and mental illness back in the 1980s. Uh, we, none of us ever mentioned Aaron's name again and we just had to get on with it. Uh, and I think that's really what gave me the inspiration to get into working with mental illness. I wanted to make sure that no young person would have to take their life again. Um, so what I'd like you to do tonight is, is have a really good think how you can contribute uh, to mental illness. Obviously it's a, something that goes very much beneath the radar in Australia. Uh, we need to do a lot more work and research uh, we also need to raise a lot more funds. There's a lot of charity organisations out there dealing with mental illness. Um, we have to attack this now. It's the most important thing uh, facing our community. Um, now just to let you know, I am giving a lecture on mental illness on the 21st of March, uh, and that will be at the Pennant Hills Hotel. So anyone who's interested in coming along... <laughs>
massive round of applause for RPB Academy. Absolutely magnificent. Please 
request Sukhji to join me on stage. Thank you, thank you so much. I'm going to do something a bit naughty and I'm going to sit down. So, I want every child, if you are backstage, if you're in the foyer, in the toilet, if you're outside gossiping about Gossip Girl, come on down, just like these awesome girls over here. And I want you to come close and to come in so we can have a bit of a chat. Because I don't want to be on the stage, I'm nothing special. I think the message is very important. Um, but I'm, please don't make me celebrity status. That is, I'm very humble and very lucky and honoured to be here today. Um, distinguished guests, parents and these beautiful children and the awardees, thank you so much for inviting me. Um, today I'm going to share a little bit about, um, you know, what life after high school looks like and what it's offered me and, you know, some of the challenges I've faced and how it's led to unimaginable opportunities. So, when I graduated from high school, I was unaware that life was more than the rules society creates. Unaware that these rules could be changed. Now, I'm not saying your new life goal is to be an outlaw or to end up in prison. I'm saying that life is interactive. Take control of your life. So, you know, before you go Snapchatting and hashtagging, oh, first of all, problems, get out of the passenger seat of your car and start taking control of your life. Now, fear is going to be a massive part. When I was getting bullied in high school, when I was on that stage of Australia's Got Talent, fear was a massive part of my journey. And it is an everyday thing that we as humans face. But you get to decide how much. You get to decide how much that fear is going to control your life, how you can actually use that and turn that into power. So, Many of us, you know, choose our path after high school um, out of, you know, we do it for practical reasons and what we really want, it seems impossible, out of reach. So we go for the bare minimal because we think, oh, we're going to fail if we go for what we really want. But I'm saying, ask the universe. Ask the universe for what you really want. So when I, you know, when I moved from Perth, I'm originally from Perth and I moved to Melbourne about 11 months ago. And 11 months ago, I arrived with an undergraduate degree in international relations and political science. I had $500 in my bank account. I didn't have a job. I didn't have a house. I didn't have a husband to marry because apparently if you leave, move out of home, you have to have a husband to marry. And, but I had a lot of determination and belief in myself. I knew that I had to make this work and I knew that I would get opportunities in Melbourne that I just simply couldn't get in Perth. And I tell all my friends, I've got more opportunities in Melbourne in a week than the whole life that I've spent in Perth. So I knew I had to fight for something that I was very scared of, but I knew I had to do. So, you know, in order, um, you know, I can't make the nicest dial in the world yet, and, you know, I haven't really solved all the world's problems, but I do know that I've managed to make something I love doing, which is performing and standing up for human rights and being an activist and representing my community and I've managed to make that a full-time job. So of course I can do it, of course you can. And I can see people clicking and I remember um, Jake was asking about the clicks. So what we do in Spoken Word Poetry is that um, if you agree with something that someone is saying on stage or if you really feel what they're feeling, instead of clapping, because clapping can be quite distracting for the performer, the person that's up here, it's a bit of a scary thing to be you know, sharing your soul. So we ask our audience to participate and click and make it an interactive exercise. So, if I didn't take control of my life and become open to new challenges um, and opportunities, I wouldn't be the Sukhji I am today. If it wasn't for the casting director of Australia's Got Talent, who convinced me um, that this audition, the first audition that I did, would be beneficial to the Sikh community to you know, trigger an important conversation, not only in Australia, but worldwide, I wouldn't have honestly done and shared my spoken word on TV. When they contacted me, I wasn't in a place that I wanted to you know, perform on stage. I wasn't settled in Melbourne. You know, I was afraid, how are they going to portray me? How, you know, how's the world going to see me? What if I stuff up? And we have all these fears in our mind, but then I had to put them aside and realise, what would that mean for little things and calls out there? Because I certainly did not have role models on TV. And it's really important 
for our youth and for the next generation to have role models and see, you know, where am I on TV? We have Thade over here. Now there'll be other people like you and out there who'll be like, yeah, he can do it, so can I. And it's really important you don't know who you're going to inspire. So, if, you know, if I had one big message to share, share with everyone today, because I know everyone's hungry, everyone wants to eat, and I get it. I'm going to quickly go to the last bit. And I want you to, you know, to my fellow, you know, whether you're a Sikh, whether you're an Indian, whether, you know, you just come for the cool Indian treats tonight. One thing I must share with you is that learn about your heritage. Learn about your identity. And who we are and what we stand for, what you stand for, is truly special. So the more I learn about my, my faith, Sikhism, the more I want to be the best version of myself. Don't be afraid what people will think. As humans, we're conditioned to judge, but let them judge. Let them all judge you. What's the worst that can happen? The world is currently craving the truth, craving individuality. So go out there and show them how big your brave is, how hashtag fully seek you can be. Lead the way. And don't wait around for someone else to live your life for you. Don't wait around for that idea you've been thinking about. Action it now. So, you know, be your own role model. And you don't need to have a million PhDs or a million dollars. You don't need to be a political leader. You can make change right now, because sometimes we put aside, we let other people do it. We go, no, 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 they're the leaders, they'll do it. No, use your own two hands. Use your own two hands to make everyday change, because it's very much possible. And, you know, I want you to join me. I want you to join me and start seeing your challenges as an opportunity rather than your barriers. You've got to start using these challenges to discover who you really are and what you're actually made of. And if you ever need a reminder, I want everyone here today to put their hand on their heart. Yes, I'm gonna make you do something really cheesy. Put your hand on your heart. And you might be able to feel your heartbeat tonight. Can everyone kind of feel their heartbeat? Yeah? Click if you can feel your heartbeat. Yeah, you can feel your heartbeat. It's not beating for me. It's not beating for Kesha. It's not beating for Salman Khan. It's beating for you. So all that amazing body that we've been given, you've got a brain in your head, we've got shoes in our feet, we've been given so many amazing opportunities in this beautiful country that is Australia, so why not? Why not use that for change and to actually make something of it? So, and don't ever forget, you is kind, you is wise, and you is important. And then to finish up, I thought I might do a new poetry piece, if that's cool with you. Would you guys be alright with that? Would you, would you be alright with that? Okay, cool. So this piece is called, it's called My Hands. That's right, I think she wants a mum. That's right, mums are great. <laughs> Hands up if you watch the news every night and can't decide on fight or flight or might is right. Hands up everybody and wave them in the air like you just care. He told me, my bro, leave this earth better than at your birth when you go. So I look at these hands, two brown hands. One day I heard my mum say, my name is Sujit. It means winner of peace. So I thought I had to be a political feature, a spiritual preacher, anything but this hairy-legged creature. But then I saw the hands. My sister said to me, hold my hand, Ben, and look with me. When you gaze at this country, what do you see? Do you see stats or spirits? Do you see boundless plains or borders? When you see the stars, do you see southern crosses or southern seven sisters? Friends, hold my hand with me and walk the streets. Do you see the everyday heroes, everyday white, black and grey, curly and straight, giving their time of day, helping me on my way, laughing and having their say, teaching their kids like I'll teach mine to tend and mend and spend the time on another because a stranger is not always danger. So wave those hands, wave hello, shake those hands, shake them off, yo. Use those hands to touch, not type or like or emoji wink. You're all right. You'll feel the love and compassion no, no text can provide. Take a stand, hands. 
they're yours. I might be the wordsmith, but with your applause, action this poetry and find your cause. Join this girl from Perth on a mission to leave this earth better than we found it at our birth. Thank you so much. Enjoy your night. Thank you for having me. Abilities were taken from me with one exception. I would choose books and the ability to read them. Or, in 2016, perhaps a Kindle with electricity. Because with reading, I would learn how to regain all the things taken from me and learn much, much more. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and a sincere thank you to everyone involved with this great event for this honor and providing me the opportunity to speak here. My name is Tej Singh Baveja and I am 10 years old. In my 10 years so far, I have lived in Thailand, China, Singapore and Australia and my hobbies are cricket, reading, playing guitar, technology and my sister wants me to say playing with her. During the very first online application, I was asked to state my favorite word. I racked my brain and with a flash of brilliance came up with the word interesting. Dad immediately shot me a glare that said, clearly, that's not very interesting. Then my brain really got to work and came up with dodecahedron a 12-faced, three-dimensional figure discovered by Leonardo da Vinci. It was logical, as I love mathematics, da Vinci is super cool, and I enjoyed the rhythm of a five-syllable word that had me bobbing do 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 dodecahedron do do I then had a Skype interview with a producer followed by a panel interview with five judges including dozens of questions and each time a spelling test. I was then selected from almost 3,000 applicants to be one of the 52 for the show. In the very first episode, 52 was cut down to the final 26 to compete in the Great Australian Spelling Bee. During the show, I made some amazing friends around Australia. I also loved the different challenges and themes. I was attacked by a life-size dinosaur, played drums in a 12-piece band on TV, and saw a massive 10-meter pizza. I also loved the speed spell challenge, since I felt like I was standing in a portal to another world but especially since I had my ultimate bounce back moment, working really hard after missing out the first time to come equal first the next time I stepped up in that challenge. I learned so much from this experience, starting with the need to always believe in yourself. I'll be honest and say, I wasn't sure if Australian would want a little boy with a patka on his head. But being fearless got them to want me for my character, not my looks. Secondly, never ever give up. Can you imagine if Steve Jobs had given up either when he dropped out of college or when he was kicked out of his own company before coming back and creating the I terms that have taken the world by storm. Lastly, there were many times during the auditions and the show when I felt scared and uncertain. Each time, I remembered I wasn't alone. Apart from the support of my family, I always knew I had God or Wahiguru beside me day and night. With an ally like that, it made no sense to be scared. I would like to take this opportunity to congratulate all the other youngsters on it here tonight for their incredible and inspirational achievements. And I would also like to thank my family 
for the, all the love and support they've given me throughout this journey. I stand here beaming with pride to be an Australian of Indian origin and a global Sikh. Thank you. Jai Hind, Jai Hind.